Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today we are making 10 freezer meals out Ooh. of 25 ingredients. So my name is Kristen. And I'm Camille. And we just want to give a special thanks to Kroger for sponsoring this video. While well, most of us are doing a lot more grocery shopping and a lot more cooking at home, today we wanted to share some tips and tricks that will not only help you stretch your groceries, but also stretch your budget. So if you've been watching our YouTube channel for a while, you know that we love Kroger. Now our mom used to go to Kroger every <laughs> single week. Like yep. she would pass every I think, Friday. three grocery stores on her way to Kroger because she loved it that much. And so it made us just love Kroger. That's where we go. Exactly. I love Kroger's fresh meat, their fresh vegetables, their fresh fruits. They just have a great selection and great quality products. Kroger also offers pickup options and delivery options which is fantastic just because of everything that's going on right now. Plus, for me, whenever, well, I had a baby like three years ago and pickup had just started. <laughs> yes. Best invention ever. I wish they would have had that 10 years ago. Yes, with all the kids, <laughs> exactly. right? But it's a game changer, especially for a busy mom or dad. Like, order your stuff on the app, pick it up, you're good to go. And I just feel it's a little safer right now, too. So in total, everything costs about $119, which is not bad for 10 meals. No. So online, Kroger has tons of coupons and tons of deals that they share when you shop online and then do either pickup or delivery. Kroger also will give you coupons for things that you frequently buy. Yes. So I get these chicken breasts all the time and I get a coupon at least once a month that gives me like half off my bag of chicken or I even get coupons for free items that I buy a lot, like yogurt, cheese, just random things that my family always needs. So, killer deals all the time. So we decided to share with you 10 freezer meals, and these freezer meals, we really thought them out because we wanted to use all the ingredients that you could possibly have, and then you can stick them all in the freezer so nothing goes bad, and okay. you use them when you want to. So we're trying to stretch out your meals, stretch out your budget, stretch out your food, and it's perfect way to do it by cooking with freezer meals. All right, if so if you guys are ready, let's make these 10 freezer meals. Our first recipe is our tried and true favorite, black <laughs> yes. bean corn salsa chicken. This is actually one of the very first recipes I put on the blog you 10 did? years ago. Oh my gosh. 10 years ago, because <laughs> as like a newlywed, I felt like such a domestic goddess <laughs> that I could make this. So it's so yes, easy, it's so easy. So we're starting with about a pound and a half of chicken breasts. They're frozen, yep. about four chicken breasts. We just threw them in there. Yep. And then we're gonna dump in half a container of salsa. Mm -hmm. So this is a 16 ounce container. You just need a cup of salsa. If you've got some in your fridge, great. Use that up. Right. Okay, then we just have some black beans, a can of black beans. Yep. Rinsed and drained, because you don't want the black stuff in it. <laughs> the sludge part. All right. And then we just have a can of corn that's also been drained. We're throwing that in. It's okay if you don't drain that one. You don't really have to, but yeah, yeah. we did. And then we're just going to do a half package of taco seasoning. So I literally just kind of feel that's for the I half. Do too. Yep. Okay. And then just pour about half of it in, and then it's made out of like the kind of like foil material that you yep. can just like roll it up and use it again. Save it so for next time. We're gonna save this for another recipe. Yep. And then we've got some water, about what, a cup? Yeah, about a half a cup half or cup. so. Yeah, Just so it will come to pressure. Exactly. So in an instant pot, this is going to cook for 25 minutes mm -hmm. because it's frozen. frozen. And a slow cooker, how long is this? I did like three to four hours high, mm -hmm. or six to eight on low, so, kind of depending yep. on what Watch you like. Watch your chicken breast because they don't have a lot of fat, and so they tend to dry out in a slow cooker. I would check them about six hours on low. That's probably enough. Make sure it's okay. Yeah. And then with the rest of our 25 in ingredients that we have in here, there's also some tortillas, and then of course our giant bag of <laughs> cheese that you'll be seeing a lot in these yes. recipes. Yes, yes, we love cheese. So those are your toppings for your easy, black bean and corn, yep. salsa chicken. <laughs> this recipe is called Kahlua pork. Now we had this a lot growing up. It's one of my favorites and Thank it's you. so easy because it's just literally like two ingredients. Two ingredients. Well, three, three. ingredients. Mm -hmm. All right, should we get started? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, just note it's a pork roast. And so in the Instant Pot, it's gonna cook for about 70 minutes or so. It's kind of a smaller one, so 70 minutes is fine. And then if you're in the slow cooker, I like to cook my pork roast for like 
10 hours, like eight yes. to 10 on, on low. Low and slow. Exactly. Yep. So put it on our bag. And now we'll put all the directions for all of these recipes yep. for you down below in the description. Okay, got our bag ready to go. You ready? Yep. Okay. So these two ingredients are just salt and liquid smoke. Yep. So liquid smoke you find on the barbecue aisle at the grocery store, like where all the barbecue sauce is. Now here's where you have to get down and dirty to do this. Well, you don't have to. You could sprinkle it on, but I found that the flavor is even better if you can kind of rub the salt in, like massage it into the pork. The pork. It's going to give it just a little bit more flavor, mm. kind of give it that crusty outside. I like it. So do about half on one side and then we'll flip it over and rub the other half. Now here's the thing, if you're short on time, don't worry about this step. But you can just dump it in. You can just dump it That's in. That's usually what I do is just dump yep. it and it's but good. But if you love flavor like I do. Go ahead and rub it in. And then we're just gonna pour the liquid smoke on top. I just kept the pork in its tray so it could kind of catch the drippings. And you can just throw it all away when you're done. Yeah, I'm exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna flip it over and do the other half. So with this, I found that it's best to use like a little bit fattier cut of pork. Nice. So keep these fat marblings in. Don't feel like you need to trim them because that's what's going to add tenderness and moistness to this. So. Juiciness. Yes. All right. Okay, I'm gonna put it Throw right in it there. In. Perfect. Now, if you're cooking this in the slow cooker, you just put it right in. Yep, as is. It'll yep. be enough moisture, you'll be fine. It'll be fine. But if you're doing the Instant Pot, you need to add about a half a cup of water to it before you cook it. We're gonna close this up and stick it in the freezer. This is, yeah, ready to go. Ready to go. Awesome. So now that the Kahlua is done, you can easily shred it. It should just fall apart. Use, you can use two forks or like we have, we're using these bear claw shredders that are super nice when you're shredding meat. So you can serve this as part of our 25 ingredients. We have flour tortillas, but we love to serve this over rice. It's delicious just over a bread of rice, put your favorite vegetables on top. You can also do it in a wrap. You can do it on a salad, or here's my favorite. Save a little bit if you have any leftovers. Put it on top of homemade pizza. Kahlua oh, pork pizza. pizza. It is so good. And put some peppers on there, some banana peppers. I love it's that. It's delicious. So there's my Kahlua pork secret. Done with this one, let's move on to the next one. All right, so our next recipe is zesty barbecue chicken. Now this is a grilling recipe. We usually don't do a lot of grilling on no. this channel, but I thought it'd be kind of fun that it's kind of the end of summer yeah. and it's just the perfect thing that you can just put in your fridge and then throw in the grill when you're ready to eat. So super simple, super easy. And Should by it? making it now and sticking it in the freezer and then thawing it out, like it's gonna have plenty of time to marinate, yes. which is gonna be so delicious. So we're gonna start with a bottle of zesty Italian dressing. You wanna use half of it, it's about a cup. Yeah. Just go ahead and dump it on, try to get on all the chicken. We added a little bit more chicken breast this time. We used six. Yes, we, we did. We have big we families. <laughs> and when I grill chicken, I always like to do extras because you can put it on top of salads, you can use it in casseroles. Like it's so versatile and it's good to have for lunches. So I always do extras if I'm grilling. Nice. Yeah. Then the next is you're just gonna add a bottle of barbecue sauce. Now I'm not gonna do the whole bottle, I'm gonna leave a little bit so you can like baste it on at the end as you're ready to serve. Mm. So let it caramelize. We are gonna yummy. put in still a good amount of barbecue sauce. Yep. Awesome. Okay, and that's literally all you do. You just wanna make sure before you grill it that you stick it in the refrigerator like even 36 hours before you grill. Yeah. 24, you're okay, but if they're really thick chicken breasts, oh, 36, go, longer. go yeah. longer. So that they can be totally thawed. I'll tell you a secret too. I have thrown this in the slow cooker before. Really? Yep, and then we shredded it up and we ate it on sandwiches. So, Smart. you could, if you don't have a grill, yep. you can put this in your slow cooker or even your Instant Pot. I love it. Instant Pot, probably add a little bit of liquid. A little bit of water. That's how we roll. All right guys, we're done with this one. Let's move on to the next. Our next recipe is another favorite of mine and my family, my kids love this. It's our root beer pulled pork sandwiches. It's so simple. We're just starting with a pork roast. I usually aim for about three pounds, two to three pounds, and that feeds my family of six. Yeah. Easy. Um, so I put the pork roast in there, and if you watch, there are killer deals on pork roast. Plus, if you buy it in a two pack, 
it's even cheaper, right? So, so you could double this yeah. so easily and yep. then, yeah. And so then we're just gonna pour in a bottle of barbecue sauce. You can get whatever flavor you want. So today we're trying the Texas style barbecue sauce from Kroger, which is my favorite. Like mm -hmm. when we were in Texas, I used to buy it because I'm like, oh, so Texas, many, we need right? Texas style. <laughs> it does. I love the black pepper yes, flavor of this. Flavor. It's so good. And then, so you usually only need about two cans of root beer, but you can't really just buy, buy two, two cans. cans. And so it was so much cheaper to buy a two liter bottle. And yeah. so we're just doing 24 right. ounces, which is about a third yeah. of or two liter. And then tonight for dessert, <gasps> root, root beer floats. floats. Yes. That is the perfect summer dessert. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Perfect. There we go. Okay. okay I feel now if you it. don't have root beer, you could use Coke. Yes. You could use Dr. Pepper. Just You just want the sweetness and the sugar from the soda pop that really just makes, makes it so, so good. good. Really moist, falls apart. Exactly. Good to go. Okay. So to make this in the slow cooker, which is actually the way I prefer this, kind of that low slow method. Yeah. Um, eight to 10 hours on low, and then you just shred it up. Or in the instant pot, because it's gonna be a frozen roast, um, 70 to 90, to 90 minutes. Yeah. Where this one's about two and a half, three pounds. What did you say? I would say like 70 you'd 70? be fine. Yeah. yeah. So 70 minutes and then you're good to go. We shred this up and you can serve it on buns or we still have our frozen dinner rolls. You could use some of these if you've got any left yep, yep. and cook those up and serve it on those as little slider sandwiches. Yes, I love so. it. There you go. Simple, easy, so yes. good. Okay, let's move on to the next recipe. Our next recipe is three ingredient chili. Yes. So it's so simple, such a good one with fall coming. Right, I love it. So we're gonna throw this together. This, I love even the simple recipes like this because I prep it all and then my kids can take care of it. Right, or you just don't have to think about what's yeah. for dinner. You just pull it out like, okay, it's we're done. Ready. Yeah, exactly. so here we go. So the first ingredient is ground turkey or you can use ground beef, yep. whatever you wanna use, but we use ground turkey. turkey. was on sale this It week. was, that's why we did it. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna add a can of diced tomatoes, but you wanna make sure that it does have like some green chilies or something in it. You'll notice this one is called chili ready. Like literally made for chili. Exactly. So we'll add those in. It's got some really good seasonings in it. It smells like chili too. I agree. All right, next one. Last one is just chili beans. And we want to keep the liquid in there. Cause that's going to Cause it's add it's to this. Chili. Yeah, it's chili, it's a soup. Chili. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so we do need some liquid in there. Exactly. And then that's it. All right, so we wouldn't suggest cooking this in the Instant Pot just because there's not a ton of liquid and you don't want a, a really liquidy chili. So I yeah. suggest slow cooker for like three to four hours on low or even on your stove top and just until it's heated through. So yeah. super simple. And then one of our other ingredients is cheese. So you can throw a little cheese on top. And then we also have some frozen rolls that you can cook and have it yeah. with your soup. That's part of our 25 ingredients. So. Super simple, easy meal, all in your freezer. Done. So the next recipe is our easy turkey tacos or beef tacos. Yeah, whatever you've got. We did turkey because it was on sale and yep, it was on sale and mm -hmm. I love turkey. We love so. turkey, ground turkey. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we cooked and drained the grease from our ground turkey so it's all ready to go. So you can just throw that right okay. in there. Next, we already used one of these so it's the chili ready diced tomatoes. It has some chilies in it and it smells Amazing. So we're gonna dump that in there too. I like the seasonings that are used in those. Yes. And then we already used a taco seasoning, half of it, so we're just going to throw in the other half. Do you know what I love is the Kroger taco seasoning. It is so inexpensive, but it has the yes. best flavor. Okay. Out of all the taco seasoning packets that I have used. Yes, so yeah. I was comparing prices. This was only 38 cents yes. compared to a dollar of the name brand. Right. And it's the same ingredients you're just yeah. paying for. And this one has good flavor. Exactly. So, there you so, go. I've used that one for years. Go Kroger. <laughs> okay, and that's all you have to do. Now, if you're gonna cook this in the Instant Pot, you wanna add about a third a cup of water before you cook it. Um, I wouldn't suggest putting it in right now, but right before you cook it, add your water. Then if you're gonna add, put it in the slow cooker, you can cook it for three to four hours on low, or if you're just desperate and hungry, stick it on your stove top, yeah. heat it up. You could also Super simple. even do this one in the microwave. 
defrost totally. it because the meat's already cooked. Yes. So you just need to defrost it and then warm it up. Yep. And you'll be good to go. This is good for like Everything. quick lunches. Serve it over nachos, put it on a salad. You can put it on a tortilla and roll it up in a burrito. Like it's so versatile. Exactly. So part of our 25 ingredients, you have tortillas and cheese and a little bit of extra salsa yep. to go with it. So super simple, easy, and you're good for dinner. All right, done with this one. Let's move on to the next. So the next recipe is cream cheese chicken. Now we grew up having this <laughs> all the time. It's our favorite. Seriously. And my kid's favorite. Mine too. Yeah. So we're just gonna jump right in. So right now we have, like you can do four to six frozen yeah. chicken breasts. We did six because we have big families. Big family. or, and husbands that eat a lot of food. Yeah. Plus I like to make a little bit extra so I have leftovers for lunch. Perfect. That sounds perfect. All right, so the first thing you're gonna add is just a can of cream of chicken soup. And we're gonna put that in. Now there is a secret when you're cooking in the Instant Pot, when you use cream of chicken soup, you can make it. You just have to make sure not to mix things. Yeah. All right, sorry, I'll hurry and add my next one. Okay. Then you're just gonna add a block, an eight ounce block of cream cheese. Throw that in. And this is another one you don't mix in. Nope, it's yep. just gonna sit there nice and pretty. So the next ingredient is a packet of Italian dressing. dressing. So it's just the mix, it's just the seasoning. We're not actually making a dressing. Exactly. We're gonna add the whole thing. And I love this because, yeah. like Kroger's taco seasoning, it is a whole lot cheaper to get Seriously. Kroger brand than it is a normal Italian yeah. seasoning brand. It's like a quarter of the price, yes. it's the same it's ingredients. The same ingredient. mm, it has great flavor. And it smells good. <laughs> we like to smell. Yes, we do. Okay, and then we're just gonna add two cups of chicken broth. So we're just gonna add that in. We're gonna eyeball our two cups. It's okay if you have a little good more. To me. It's fine. So we're gonna close it all up. And then a part of our 25 ingredients, we yep. have a package of penne pasta that you'll just cook that up while this is cooking and then put it all together, put this right on top and it's so, so good. good. <laughs> all right, we're okay. all done with this one. Let's move on to the next. Our next recipe is buffalo chicken roll-ups. These are a family favorite. They're so good. Anything that I can roll up and eat in a handheld pocket, <laughs> right? it's my go-to. <laughs> exactly. So we're gonna jump right into this. We've got our bag labeled with what's gonna be inside of it. Kristen, do you wanna add the chicken? Yes, sorry, opening it up. There we go. So depending on how big your family is, yeah. like if it's little, you can cut this recipe in half, but we usually add like four mm -hmm. chicken breasts. It will feed about four to six people. Yep. So, that's so these bags are three pounds of chicken. Yes. And I usually use it for two meals. Uh -huh. So a pound and a half of each. Yes. Okay, and then of course, buffalo sauce. We're gonna do a half cup of this. This one's also got some yummy garlic flavor to it. Right, so. it's one of my new favorites. It's so good. Then we're just gonna add just uh, eight ounces of cream cheese. We'll just throw it on in. And literally just throwing in a whole the block. block. Yep. <laughs> and then I've got half a cup of water because we need it to come to pressure if you're cooking it in the Instant Pot. And the added moisture in your slow cooker too is fantastic. Exactly. So okay. to That's cook in all. a slow cooker, you're gonna need six to eight hours on low. And in an Instant Pot, we put on here 25 minutes because you're cooking from frozen. And they're big. Like they if they were smaller, you could easily do 15 to 20. Yep. But because they're big, we're doing 25. And because we do want the liquid to be separate, we're not going to mix it in. We're not going to mix that cream cheese in there right now. You yes. can do it after it's done cooking. Exactly. Okay. So when it's all done cooking, you're going to shred up that chicken and just mix in the cream cheese with it making it nice and creamy and good. Then you're gonna take the mixture and put it in your frozen dough. Now it's not gonna be frozen actually anymore. You're gonna pull it out, let it thaw a little bit so you can stretch the dough. You're gonna put in your chicken and then put a little bit of cheese on top and then pinch it up on, both, on all four sides and then you're gonna cook it at about 350 degrees for anywhere from like 15 to 25 minutes. Just watch it, make sure it doesn't burn. Our next recipe is so easy. It's Italian meatball sliders. Little tiny sliders. So we're gonna start with a bag of frozen meatballs. And these are the Italian style, so they're already flavored and they've got delicious taste. We're gonna dump them on in. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna come out, I know it. Okay, so I dumped the meatballs into the bag and next I'm going to use just a traditional 
pasta sauce. Now Kroger makes a ton of flavors and so you can use any flavor that you, your family loves, yeah. but we just, we're all about traditional here. And the meatballs are already seasoned, so you don't need a ton of extra flavor. No, there's already a ton of yep. flavor packed in there. Yep. I love it. That's it. That's all we need for the Super food. simple. So easy. And we talked about this before. Yeah, we know this recipe is really easy. You don't have to put it in a freezer bag, but we do it for convenience. Yes. And so that you don't even have to think about what for what's for dinner tonight. Exactly. Like it's in the freezer, you just pull it out, it's already assembled. You're dump ready to and go. go. Exactly. So there you go. In the instant pot, these will take seven minutes to cook, but you're going to want to add at least a half cup, maybe one cup of water mm -hmm. so that it can come to pressure. And then in the slow cooker, I would do three to four hours on low just so yep. they're cooked through. These meatballs come pre-cooked but you want them to warm up. Yeah, so. or if you're like really desperate on time or you don't yep. have an Instant Pot, you can just throw them on your stove top, Look at that. heat them up, and you're ready to go. Yeah. So, the sliders. So we have our frozen, frozen. rolls. Yep. So while this is cooking, you want to thaw your rolls, mm -hmm. let them rise. It takes, what, a good three hours to yeah. rise? Yep. And so you just want to follow the instructions on the package, cook up your rolls, and then you're gonna put on a, like two meatballs per roll and a little bit of cheese from your big bag of cheese. <laughs> and that's it. That's how super simple they yep. are. But so good. everyone's going to love and them. And do you know what? We keep these rolls in our freezer all the time. We do too. Kroger brand, like even before we made this video, I've been using these for years and my kids love them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I feel good because it tastes homemade. So. Yes. All right, done with this recipe, let's move on to the next one. And our last recipe is baked ziti. This one's a little bit different because there is no freezer bag. We have some nine by nine pans that we're going to cook. I love this because it makes two. Yeah. So we're really two making dinners. like 11 freezer meals. Seriously, I'm and this is a good one too. Keep one for your family, take one to a friend, or eat one tonight, eat put one, one in the later. freezer later. Exactly. Okay, should we get started? Yeah. Okay, so we actually first, we cheated a little. We cooked our <laughs> penne pasta in the Instant Pot. It was about four minutes, yeah. super fast. And now we're gonna just kind of heat everything up on the stove top and put it all together. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. okay, so you can use ground beef or ground turkey. I just bought a ton of ground turkey because I like that better. So you're gonna cook your ground turkey all the way through. Then you're just gonna add some onion. So this is one whole onion that we're just cooking in with it. Okay, while that's cooking, we're just gonna throw in our cream cheese because we want it nice and creamy. Ooh, it's stuck. There we go. <laughs> gonna try and cut this up a little bit. And you could cut it up before you add it in too. Yes, probably should have done that, huh? All right, now after it's kind of starting to melt a little bit, you can go ahead and add your spaghetti sauce. So we have two cans of our classic pasta sauce, but you can use whatever kind you like. Perfect. Then we're just gonna mix this around, wait until our cream cheese melts, and all the pasta sauce is heated through. Okay, next we're just gonna add some seasonings. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of onion powder, and then I'm also gonna do one teaspoon of garlic powder. Depending on the sauce that you use, it might be flavorful enough for you, but you can go ahead and add these. And then of course, just salt and pepper as you desire. I also like to add in Italian seasoning or basil just mm -hmm. to give it that authentic Italian taste. Sounds good. Sauce is all mixed, all melted together. It smells so yep. good. I know, huh? Okay. Now we just got to assemble. Awesome. Do you want to go first? Yep, so the first thing we're gonna add is a quarter of these noodles. So we're gonna do a quarter in this container, and we're gonna do a quarter in this one. You just, you can just eyeball it. Yeah. And then just kind of spread it out all along the bottom evenly. Perfect. And it's ready for sauce. And then, okay, like a quarter of the sauce. Yep, in each get one. as close as we can to here. Again, we're gonna just eyeball. Huh? Yeah, and that's <laughs> totally fine. It really is, it'll be fine. It will turn out great no matter what. Exactly. Awesome, what do you think? Getting great. close? Yep. Okay, all right. And then you want me to do cheese? Yeah, you do cheese while I put this on. So then just do as much cheese as you want. We've got plenty. Yes, we do. Probably about half a cup though. 
Now, I just, because I wanted to just buy one ingredient and it's cheaper yep. if you buy in bulk, it I just is. bought some Mexican cheese because it, it's so versatile. You can use so many things with yeah. it. But usually you can use like usually cheddar or mozzarella with this yep. recipe. Yep, Parmesan. Yep. You can use Asiago cheese. Like you can use any mixture of cheese really will work. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But I like cheese, so perfect. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more so we're pretty even. Okay, okay there you good. go. Ready for that? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, cheese stop. Okay, and then we go again. So if you're cooking one right now, you don't need to put any foil on it, but if you're freezing one, put some foil on it, some nice yeah. thick foil you want. Yep, good heavy foil. Heavy duty. Yep. And if you don't have heavy duty, do like two layers of foil. Yep. And I feel like it doesn't last as long in the foil, so I'd say like you have a month to use it. Yeah. Um, but. Sometimes what I'll do even, because you can get two gallon freezer bags. Uh -huh. So I'll cover it in foil and then I'll slip it inside a two gallon freezer oh, bag. Oh, that's a really so good that, idea. So just to help seal it in a little bit better, but yeah. you don't have to. This will last just fine for like 20 to 30 days. Nice. Then when you're ready to cook, you just cook at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. So we're gonna actually throw this one in the oven so we can show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, guys, we hope you loved these freezer meals. Now, if you wanna see more Instant Pot and slow cooker freezer meals, you can find that video right over there. All right, we'll see you next time, bye.